Welcome to St. Mary's Church on the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. The priest celebrant is Father Leoy. I am Sandy Lent, the lector. Caitlin Kremer is our cantor. And as we begin the liturgy, please pick up the pew missile and turn to page 142 to join in reciting the entrance antiphon and singing it after each verse. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And today on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, we kind of extend a little bit the Christmas season because of the gospel today of the changing of water into wine the first miracle, the first manifestation of the power of God, Jesus as the Son of God. And so as we begin, let us first now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you transformed water into wine. 
Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you transform us into God's holy people. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth in peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another mighty deeds to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, and to another varieties of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The Word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. And so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. And so they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, January is not a common month for weddings in our country. Nevertheless, a wedding is at the center of the gospel for this second Sunday in Ordinary Time. It is at this wedding feast that Jesus performs his first miracle in St. John's Gospel, changing water into wine. And this miracle actually is the third of three manifestations of three epiphanies that we celebrate at this Christmas time. The first is the manifestation of the newborn Savior to the whole world and the persons of the Magi. And that we did on Epiphany Sunday two weeks ago. And the second manifestation is of Jesus as the Son of God. And we saw that at the baptism of the Lord, which we observed last Sunday. And then this Sunday we have that third manifestation, the miracle, his first miracle, and this is what inspired the disciples to follow him. Now all of our readings today really kind of reveal a transformative effect that God has upon the world. In our first reading, Isaiah prophesies that God will transform the Israelites and their land. He will transform them from forsaken to espoused, as a suitor rejoices in his bride. And St. Paul in the second reading extols the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which transforms each person differently, but all to serve the same Lord. And then in the gospel, he transforms water into wine, revealing his glory and inspiring his disciples to believe in him. Now, according to St. John in his gospel, it was just three days after his baptism that Jesus attended this wedding at Cana. And in the presence of his newly called disciples, he transforms water into wine. And at the Last Supper, in the presence of his disciples for the last time before his death, 
Jesus changes the wine into his blood. And today, as we gather for this Eucharistic feast, gathered as fellow disciples in the presence of the Lord, once again, the wine is transformed into his blood. And so St. John says that what happened in Cana was the beginning of Jesus' signs. But as we witness today and every time we gather for the Eucharist, there are no end to these signs. And so in partaking, in participating in the Eucharist, in participating at Mass each week, we are transformed by Christ's body and blood. And no matter how we feel about ourselves, we are not forsaken, we are not desolate. We are God's children, each a cause for God's rejoicing, continually transformed and renewed in holiness as Christians. And so as we will say in the communion antiphon at this mass, you have prepared a table before me and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. And now let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so like the couple at Cana, we invite the Lord to our celebration and turn to God with our needs and petitions. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer for the church, that during this week of prayer for Christian unity, we may all be one as Jesus prayed. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For those preparing for marriage, that they may be a sign of the love that God has for us, for us all, and let us pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For all nations, races, and religious groups, that Martin Luther King's dream of peace be filled among us, let us pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For this community, that we heed Mary's call to do whatever Jesus tells us, and let us pray. 
Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Ronald Clark, Genevieve Kassler, Ruth Calandro, Joseph Lasano Jr., and Yolanda De Rosa, all of whom we remember during this Eucharist, let us pray. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you give us your Son in the Eucharist, Strengthen us through this sacrament to do your will on earth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in praying the offertory antiphon. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. Come and hear, all who fear God, I will tell what the Lord did for my soul. Alleluia. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ 
as a light for the nation. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. In celebrating the most sacred day on which her only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. And be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. To us also, your servants, who though sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join together in praying the communion antiphon. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. For our online and television participants, when it is not possible for you to receive sacramental communion, it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. And so let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Catholic Ministries Appeal. 251 parishioners have pledged $59,238, or 88% of our parish goal of $67,414. We only have about $8,000 more to go, and extra pledge envelopes are available in the back of church. In the monthly food collection and bottles and cans collection, they are this weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.